Collision detection is simply determining when two objects touch. If we're able to tell when two objects are touching, we can react to the event in different ways. We can have the object bounce off of each other. We can remove an object from the canvas, or we can even increase a user score given that we're programming a game. To implement collision detection, we need to know how to use a mathematical function called the Pythagorean Theorem. The Pythagorean Theorem is a formula that'll always get the exact distance between two points. By taking the x distance between two points, the y distance between two points, multiplying these distances by a power of two, and then running the result through a square root function, we'll always be returned the exact distance from point A to point B thanks to our friend Pythagoras and geometry. So with this in mind, let's see how we can calculate the distance between two points and implement collision detection. Welcome back everyone, this is going to be another Chris course with your host Chris, and in this episode I'm going to be teaching you guys how to code collision detection with HTML5 Canvas. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my terminal window and I'm going to CD into a directory which I like to code most of my web projects in. So I like to code most of my web projects in a directory called web, so I'm going to go inside of there. And once I'm inside of here, I'm going to clone a repo called Canvas Boilerplate. And this is a boilerplate that I use for pretty much every Canvas project that I create. And if you'd like a detailed, uh, detailed walkthrough on how to download and use this boilerplate, then head on over to the How to Code Gravity course, and I do a more in-depth tutorial in comparison to what I'm about to do right now. So to keep things brief, I'm going to clone this repo into a directory called Collision Detection. And this is just going to copy all the contents within this repo into a directory called collision detection. So once that is finished up, I'm going to CD into this repo. So CD collision detection. And that's going to put me right inside of that folder. So once I'm inside of the folder, I'm going to open it up in Sublime Text. So my method of opening this up is by using this alias I have right here. This is a custom alias. So if you don't have this, then just go ahead and open this up in Finder and go ahead and drag collision detection on top of your Sublime Text icon, and it'll open it up for you in Sublime Text. So once you have this opened up in Sublime Text, we now need to download all the dependencies within our package.json file. So to do that, you can either run npm install, install, or you can run yarn. And both are going to do the same thing. It's just going to contact a server out there, an npm server, and it's going to download all of these dependencies listed out within this package.json file. And these are used for a number of purposes. If we download all of these dependencies, well, we can make use of things such as ES6, which allows us to make use of uh, next level generation of JavaScript, things such as uh, lets, constants, and so forth. Um, and it also allows us to make use of browser sync, which will manage automatic page refreshes whenever we make a change to one of our files. So by downloading these packages, we're able to do a few extra things which, which will enhance our development workflow. So that's the whole reason of downloading this repo in the first place. So let's go ahead and run Webpack in the terminal. We can only run Webpack in the terminal once we actually download all these packages. And once that happens, it's going to open up a new tab in one of your browser windows. And if I drag that on over here, you'll now see I have a Canvas project ready to go for development in the browser. So to get started coding collision detection, we are going to head on over to the source file, canvas.js. And if you're unfamiliar with this file, I'll detail it out in the How to Code Gravity course uh, line by line. So if you're unfamiliar with this right now and you really want a more in-depth explanation, then head on over to that course and just watch the intro. And once you're done watching how to install the boilerplate and how to use this canvas.js file, head back on over here and we can get started. So first thing first, let's clarify what we want to happen in regards to collision detection. So there are multiple ways to do collision detection. We can uh, detect when the mouse goes inside of a circle. We can detect when two circles touch each other. We can detect when two rectangles touch each other, or we can detect when two polygons touch each other. But we are going to be focusing on when two circles touch each other, mainly because it is going to, uh, it's going to lead into part two of this series in which we create a animation, a physics simulation in which we have multiple balls bouncing off of each other instead of just two. So this is going to be the most basic collision detection we can come up with. Two balls colliding with each other and reacting once they collide, just two. And the next one will get to more than two. So if we are going to create two circles that collide with each other, well, I guess we need two circles on the screen. So instead of a generic object, we are going to rename this to circle with a capital C since all objects are going to be capitalized. And you can see we already have some properties laid out for us in regards to this circle object. We have things such as an X and Y coordinate, we have a radius, and we also have a color for the circle as well. 
So we now need to actually instantiate a circle. We need to create a circle whose properties and methods are independent from any other circle that we create. So to do this, we're going to head on down to our implementation section and we're going to create a new variable, but instead of var, we're going to be using let. And let is a feature of ES6 that is basically the same thing as var, but it, is, it takes scope into account, which var does not. Um, if you'd like to learn more about this, well, there are plenty of good courses out there on ES6. If I were to recommend one, I would check out Laircast.com. They have a great course on an introduction to ES6. Go ahead and check that out. But just know, let is basically the same thing as var. It's just an improved version. So we are going to be declaring a let called circle1. This is going to be equal to a new circle, capital C. And let's just go ahead and give it an x coordinate of 300 and a y coordinate of 300 as well. And when it comes to the circle's radius, we'll just say we, we'll just give it a large radius of 100 and we're going to make this circle black. All right, so we're creating a circle and we're storing it within this circle one variable. But usually it's best practice to set these variables within this init function. Basically you declare them outside of the init function and set them with inside of it. So what this would look like is, we would grab what we're setting right here, declare the variable at the top, and then we'd set circle one equal to a new circle within this init function. And this init function is being called once at the bottom before the animate function, but it's also being called whenever we resize the browser. And this is going to come in handy down the line once we want to reset all the objects on our screen due to a window resize rather than creating new ones each time the browser window gets smaller or larger. You'll see down the line, just hang tight with me. So just know we always declare a variable outside of this init function, but we set it inside of it. So we're not seeing anything as of yet. And that is because although we are storing an object inside of circle one, we now need to actually draw that object on the canvas. And all of our drawing is going to take place within this animate loop. So we can go ahead and get rid of this filled text right here. And we are going to say circle one dot update. And this update function is going to call this right here, which in return, calls this dot draw function, which is this right here. And what this is going to do, it's going to take all the properties that we set over here and it's going to store them within each individual object's properties. And the properties are used within this draw function. So as a result, each time we call this circle.update function, we are creating a new circle in the middle of our screen since our animate loop is running over and over and over and over again. So we have one circle on the screen, but now we need to draw another circle and let's have the circle follow our mouse whenever, wherever we move it on the screen. So to create a circle that follows the mouse, we are going to create another circle within our implementation. So we'll say circle two, and now we need to set this circle. So we'll copy this line right here, paste it beneath it. And then we'll say circle two is equal to an X coordinate of undefined a Y coordinate of undefined. And uh, let's see, let's go ahead and make this radius equal to 30 instead of 100, make it a little smaller. And we'll go ahead and make the circle red. So what's going to happen is we're going to be moving our red circle around the screen. And once it collides with this black one in the middle, we'll go ahead and change the black one to red. Once we move our red circle outside of it, it'll change back to black. And that is how we're going to react to this collision detection. So now we need to actually draw this circle on the screen, but we want to make sure that this circle is following our mouse wherever we move it. So we are going to be saying circle two dot update, and that's going to draw on the screen. But in order to actually get this moving in regards to our mouse's positioning, we need to alter circle two's X coordinate to be equal to the mouse's X position. And mouse.x, this is just a variable that's declared all the way up here at the top. And we are setting this variable each time we move our mouse across the screen using this event listener right here. All this is doing is it's grabbing our mouse's X coordinate and placing it within this variable called mouse X for readability purposes. So we're setting circle two's X value equal to mouse X, but now we need to set circle two's Y value equal to mouse Y. And if we save that and move our mouse across the screen, we are not seeing anything at the moment. And that just means that we have a bug. So let's see, circle two, y is not a variable. We need to access property, not a variable. And there we go. Okay, so we have a circle being drawn on screen. And if you see, we move our mouse, the circle is now following our mouse wherever we go. But if we touch this black circle in the center, you'll see nothing is happening. We're not actually detecting any collision at the moment. 
And that's what we're about to implement. So to actually implement this, we need to make use of something called the Pythagorean theorem. And basically the Pythagorean theorem is just a formulaic math function, a formula that is used to calculate the distance between this red circle and this black circle, the centers of both of them. Any two points on the screen, the Pythagorean theorem will get the distance between the two, no matter if it's diagonal, vertical, or horizontal to the, to the corresponding point. So to make use of the Pythagorean theorem, we're going to be creating a new utility function called getDistance. And this function is going to take four arguments. The first two arguments it's going to take is the x and y coordinates of our first circle. So that is going to be x1 and y1. And then the last two arguments are going to be the x and y coordinates of our second circle. So that's going to be x2 and y2. All right, so that is going to be the first step to computing the distance between our two circles. But now we need to actually implement some code in here that makes use of these varying, uh, varying coordinates between our two circles. So to do that, we first need to get the distance between our x coordinates. So to get the distance between our x coordinates, we are going to say, let x distance be equal to x2 minus x1. And that is going to get the distance, uh, the horizontal distance between this x2 coordinate and this x1 coordinate. But we also need to get the distance, the y distance between these two points as well. So we'll say y distance is equal to y2 minus y1. And that's going to get the y distance between the two points as well. So once we have the distance between these two points, we can now insert them into the Pythagorean theorem. So to do this, we are going to be returning a value. And the first thing we need to do is we need to raise this x distance to a power of two. So to do that, we're going to say math.pow. This is going to calculate what happens if we raise a certain variable to a specific power. So the variable we want to raise to a specific power is going to be x distance. We're going to raise this to a power of two like so. And that's really all we need to do. So once that's in place, we also need to do this for our y distance. So we'll say math.pow y distance raised to a power of two. And then to finish this formula off, we are going to square root the entire thing. So to square root the entire thing, we're going to prepend all of this with math.sqrt, which stands for square root. And we're going to wrap the entire thing in parentheses. And with that in place, all we really need to do now is make use of this function to get the distance between the two points. So we're going to copy get distance. We're going to head on down to our animate function. And let's go ahead and console log this out so we can get a better idea of the numbers going on behind the scenes. So we'll say get distance, and then we'll select our circle ones, x coordinate, then we need a y coordinate, so circle one dot y, and then we need our second circle's x coordinate, so circle two dot x, and then we need the y coordinate as well for circle two, so we'll say circle two dot y. So we'll save that and open up our console. And now whenever I move this red circle around, you'll see that the numbers are changing over on the right hand side. And the closer I get to the center of the black circle, the closer to zero we are going to be. And eventually we are going to get some number around zero. So you'll see that we're calculating the distance between the two centers of the individual circles. The farther away I go, the bigger the number gets, no matter if it's diagonal, horizontal, or, or excuse me, vertical or horizontal. So now all we need to do is we need to determine when the edge of this circle touches the edge of the black circle. We need to determine what should happen as a result. So to do this, we need to add an if statement within our animate function. And we are going to make use of what we're console logging out here. So we'll say when the distance between the two points is less than the radius of both the first circle and the second circle, then we are going to react to this event by changing the color of the black circle. And we need to take the radii into account here because we're not changing the color of the black circle when the center of the red circle touches. We wanna change the value when the center of the red circle plus its radius is touching the center of the black circle plus the black circle's radius. And that is going to allow us to react to a collision event. So what we'll do is we'll say, circle one dot radius plus circle two dot radius. 
So if the distance between these two points is less than the combined value of the two circles radii, then we are going to change circle one's color to be red. And let's go ahead and test this out. So you'll see they're touching right now. And let's, let's see if we can test this out without it touching from the beginning. All right, so right now they're touching and it's turning red automatically because our circle is spawning in the middle of the screen. So right now our circle is spawning in undefined location. Let's go ahead and spawn this at a location of 10 and 10 so we can better exhibit what's really going on here. Okay, so it's not actually, it's not, the circle isn't actually being uh, spawned based on these coordinates, it's actually being spawned based on our animate function, so our, since our animate function is being ran over and over and over again. So you'll see from the beginning, circle2.x and circle2.y is equal to mouse.x and mouse.y. So we'll go up to our mouse.x and we'll set it, we'll set its initial value equal to 10, and we'll set its initial y value equal to 10 as well, and that should fix things up a bit. All right, there we go. So now our red circle is being spawned in the top left corner of the screen. And once we get touching to this black circle, watch what happens. You'll see immediately it turns red. But once we go off of it, it's still red. So we want to make sure that we change it back to its original value. So really, to do this, it's quite simple. We'll just add an else statement to the end of this if statement. And we'll say, if the two circles are not colliding, if they're not touching circle1's.color, will be equal to black. And with this in place, let's watch what happens. Let's go ahead and move closer, bam, and then we go off it back to black. So red, black, red, black, red, black. This is how you implement collision detection using two circles, two basic objects within a canvas piece. So that's going to be it for this one, folks. I hope you now have a better idea of how to create collision detection between two objects using Canvas.js. In the next video, we are going to be covering collision detection between multiple objects so that when multiple balls are bouncing off the sides of the screen, they actually bounce off of each other instead of passing through one another individually. So I hope you're excited, everyone, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Peace.